Okay, hi all and welcome back. Um, we're just going to talk again a little bit about scatter plots or scatter graphs or scatter diagrams. Um, they're called different things in different texts, but scatter is the, the important word there. And uh, last week we talked about uh, things that are um, two pieces of data which are positively correlated or negatively correlated or not correlated at all. So uh, this week we just want to look at a little bit more description about um, positive and negative correlations. And so I've first of all I've drawn four different graphs here and in these four graphs they all show positive correlations. So positive correlations are lines in your graph where the dots form a line and they're going uh, up in this direction, kind of like in um, coordinate geometry when you have a positive slope, uh, or exactly like it, I guess, really. Um, so they're all positive correlations because they've got lines going up in this direction. Um, but some of them are uh, can be described as uh, slightly differently. So the first one is what we call a perfect positive correlation. So it's when all of the dots form a straight line. So they're collinear, we say. If you put a ruler down on the page, they would all be in a straight line, one after another. Okay. A strong positive correlation, or in your textbook, it calls it a high. I, I prefer to go with strong, really, um, and you'll see that in other textbooks. Um, but a strong or a high positive correlation is where they almost form a straight line. You know, there might be it, it might be out a small bit from the straight line. Moderate positive correlation, not quite as straight, but you can definitely still tell that that's very much a positive correlation. You know, that is, they are roughly going up in a line. And then a weak or a low positive correlation, as they say in your textbook, is one which is a little bit closer to a jumbled mess, but you can still kind of see because there's nothing in this section in this section of the graph that it's approximately going up in a straight line as well. So I suppose when it gets back to it, when we talk about correlation really and measuring correlation, um, the more um, the more linear or collinear your dots are, the more correlated um, your two pieces of data are. So in this one, your dots are perfectly collinear, so it's a perfect positive uh, correlation. This one, not quite in a straight line, but pretty good, you know, so strong, moderate, weak. Okay, uh, the same can be said then for uh, negative correlations. So a negative correlation then can have the same kind of um, uh, descriptions, except, of course, uh, negative correlations form a line going down in this direction. So similar to uh, a negatively sloped line in coordinate geometry as well. So a perfect negative correlation is a where the dots are collinear, they form a perfectly straight line. Strong negative correlation is where they almost form a straight line, uh, moderate and weak, just like above. Uh, now, I know this is a little bit, how could you tell exactly what the difference between where does a moderate negative correlation stop and where does a, ne a weak negative correlation start? And really, you know, it is a bit, um, it, it's not an exact science is what I would say. You'll see in, a, in some texts, people will talk about, oh, it's a moderate to weak negative correlation, you know, to try and hedge their bets a little bit. So uh, as I say, that's not an exact science, but what we do have and what the, the other thing we'll look at today besides these uh, descriptions of graphs is we'll look at calculating what's known as the correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient is a way of uh, calculating a number which you use to describe the correlation. Okay, And so it's a little bit more scientific, if you like, than trying to describe these graphs using these, this terminology. So first of all, the correlation coefficient, the letter that we usually associate with it, with it or we always associate with it, is a lowercase r. OK, and a few things to say about the correlation coefficient. We'll show we'll see how to do it, how to calculate it on a um, using your calculator in a moment. Uh, but one thing to say for the leaving cert, um, there is no um, need to be able to calculate it on paper, you know, so there is no you don't have to know the formula for calculating it um, and you don't have to be able to write it out by hand. You're only required to be able to calculate it using your calculator. So that's what we'll do in a while. Uh, so the correlation coefficient is it's always a number between minus one and plus one. It can't be greater than plus one. It can't be less than minus one. Um, and it is a number, again, which describes how 
um, close to a straight line your dots are if you like or your two pieces of data form a straight line so as you can imagine next line if let's just take this away if the r number the correlation coefficient that you calculate is between like greater than zero and uh, less than or equal to one so in other words if it's a positive number you calculate then the correlation is positive so all of these if you were to calculate the correlation coefficient for these graphs they would all um, have positive numbers they'd be different numbers between zero and one but they'd be greater than one and uh, sorry greater than zero and um, and less than one for these three the perfect positive correlation would be exactly equal to one Okay, um, and then for a negative correlation, it would be a number uh, less than zero, but greater than or equal to minus one, where minus one would be a perfect negative correlation. If you calculated the correlation coefficient for this graph, it should turn out to be minus one. These then would be some number between um, minus one and zero. And the, the more strong the correlation, the closer it is to minus one when we're talking about negatives and when we're talking about positives the more uh, strong the connection the relationship the correlation between the pieces of data the closer the correlation coefficient is to plus one so for instance uh, maybe i could write these in here for a perfect positive correlation r is equal to one for a perfect negative correlation r is equal to minus one okay for a strong high positive correlation now there's no absolute definition uh, for this but um, teachers tend to give their own uh, rough idea of it and i would say you know if you had something that was um, if r was um, greater than or equal to 0 0.75 we'll say and less than one so if it's between 0.75 and one i would say it's it's a strong positive correlation then if it's uh, to be a moderate positive correlation i would say if r was anywhere between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 so greater than we'll say or equal to 0 0.5 uh, less than uh, 0 0.75 so as I say, these are not set in stone. Different teachers might have different ideas, but it just gives you an idea of how you can um, how you can associate the, the terms with the correlation coefficient. And then a weak uh, uh, positive correlation uh, would be something between 0 and 0 0.5. So R would be um, greater than 0. It couldn't be equal to 0. There'd be no correlation and less than uh, 0 0.5 so um, in truth though really when we say like a, a correlation coefficient of zero means no correlation really if it was just a slight bit over zero or under zero like 0 0.02 or something like that that would still we'd still describe that almost as no correlation you know or if it was minus 0 0.002 or something like that we'd still call that no correlation because uh, the number is so small that there, there really isn't a link between the um, between the data okay so same goes for this so if uh, in this case though it's in the negative side of things if r was um, what is it going to be it's less than minus one isn't it no sorry greater than minus one Oof. greater than minus one and less than or equal to minus 0 0.75 so that means between minus one and minus 0.75 uh, we'd call it a strong negative correlation for this one if r was um, greater than uh, minus 0 0.75 um, but less than or equal to minus 0 0.5 okay and for a weak one we'll say if r was um, what is it uh, greater than uh, minus 0 0.5 and less than zero so under zero 
but greater than minus 0.5 we we'll call it a weak negative correlation okay um so uh that's that one i suppose other thing we'll we'll show how to calculate the correlation in a moment but one important thing to say as well is that it's not uh, the correlation is not linked with slope at all the slope has nothing to do with correlation so for instance if we look at this one up here right that is a perfect positive correlation it has a correlation coefficient of one if the line if you look at my ruler here if i drew uh, the dots going like this so that it was a less sloped line than this but if they were all in a straight line, it would still be a perfect positive correlation and it would still have a correlation coefficient of one. So the correlation coefficient and correlation generally has nothing to do with the slope, except that, you know, if the slope is going this way, it's definitely going to be positive. If the slope is going down this way, it's going to be negative. Uh, but otherwise, the, um, the steepness, if you like, of the line makes no difference. You can have a, a line which is not very steep at all, but it's still forming a straight line and the correlation coefficient will be equal to one. Okay, you can have one that's very steep going up this way and the correlation coefficient will be equal to one. Okay, uh, so that's that. I think the next thing to do then is to calculate the correlation coefficient. So what I've done is I've written out some steps here and I will give you both of these pages. I'll give you a photo of both of these for your um, notes if you want to write them in. Um, these are the calculator steps for the Casio calculator that I'm about to use uh, and it shows you how to calculate the correlation coefficient. I'm going to use um, this data here from your textbook. It's on page 135 of your textbook if you want to look at it. Uh, but you can follow along here as well. So first things first, having a look at this diagram here, uh, this is the scatter graph that goes or scatter plot that goes with the data here, the English results and the French results. OK, uh, we can see that generally speaking, there is definitely, I would say, a positive correlation there, isn't there? Uh, now, if this student over here wasn't here, I would say that there would be a strong positive correlation there. But this student is a bit of an outlier. And the problem with outliers is it really does skew your correlation coefficient when you go to calculate it. So we'll calculate that in a second and we'll see how much it skews it. So uh, as I said, if that student weren't there, I would say that there's probably a very strong positive correlation. Uh, but with that student there, it could change my data quite a lot. So here's how we um, here's how we calculate. First of all, I'll just put the calculator up here where we can see it. First step is to press mode on your calculator. I'm going to turn on your calculator first. Uh, press mode. Go into uh, number two for statistics. Uh, then press two again, that A plus BX. Then it brings up these um, two columns that you can fill your data into. OK, so the X column there just takes all the data from, we'll say, I'm going to put in all this English, these English results. And then the Y column, I'm going to put in all the French results. OK, so the important thing is enter the data, press equals after every number you put in. So, for instance, uh, 70, 70 and then press equals and it populates the data, brings you down to the next line. I'm going to do the rest and kind of quickly. Second now. Right, eight numbers in there, perfect. Then just go across to the other um, table, up to the top of it, the first line, number one there and put in all the y values you must put them in in the same order as you put in the x's so for instance if the 70 here is first then the 65 has to be first in the um in the y column uh, it doesn't matter for instance if the 70 and the 65 if i put them in both together in the second line and put these in the first line you should get the exact same result um because you know it, it's it's comparing uh really it's measuring how the data is associated with each other so this 55 and 60 you must keep them together the 70 and the 65 you must keep them together also so putting it in anyway uh let's see 65 equals Okay, so that's all the data in there. 
okay your next step then and as i say this is all this will be all written out in your notes anyway your next step uh, counterintuitively is to press the on button which you might think will make your data disappear but it's all stored in that table still uh, after that then you press the shift button and then you press number one because it says stat above it there for statistics uh, next you press number five the one that says reg and then you can see number three has the r there for co uh, correlation coefficient so press number three and then lastly uh, don't worry it says zero there first of all but you have to press equals to bring up the correlation coefficient of the data you just entered so pressing equals it gives me a correlation coefficient of 0.62 so by our definition over here we said if something is between 0.5 and 0.75 and it's positive then it's a moderate positive correlation. So we're saying this data here is moderate positive correlation between it. But I can tell you, because I did this earlier, if you took student seven out of it, which is an outlier, you would have gotten a correlation coefficient of, I think it was uh, 0 0.97, which is quite close to one, isn't it? And from our reckoning, 0 0.7 is between 0.75 and one. It's a strong positive correlation. And I think looking at this graph, we would say that it's a strong, there is a strong positive correlation if this student weren't, weren't included. So a correlation coefficient is highly affected by um, outliers.